But when we were doing the, for what do I call it, a channeling together, channeling our energy together, we sort of made the pact that we never leave each other, even when one person died. And when she did pass away, and as I, as I mentioned to you, um, on the on the um, on the mail, um, I was in the room when she was very sick and was um, was dying. Was she dying? She was on morphine, or whatever. And I saw her energy leave her body and stand in the left-hand corner of the room and look look back at herself. Yeah, so you saw that. Saw that energy leave. Um, so today's guest uh, has over 50 years of experience in New Age spirituality. He has served in various roles such as advisor, consultant, healer, clairvoyant and channel of spirit uh, knowledge. From higher realms, his extensive knowledge and experience in modalities such as tarot, uh, channeled guidance, meditation, and spiritual healing uh, have made him an excellent guide uh, to reach one's full spiritual potential. Uh, an experience with abundance in all aspects of life. So guys, I'd really like to welcome you, uh, my guest, Graham White. Thank you for that rather nice introduction. <laughs> well, it's definitely one that's very needed uh, because the books that you have written are just phenomenal. And today I wanted to dive into two of your books. Uh, and that is the first one called Metaphysical Mysteries Revealed. Mm -hmm. uh, and this book you mentioned was almost 100% channeled. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then your second book, Abundance with Your Higher Self, uh, which you did not channel, you wrote that one yourself. Uh, yeah. I wanted to start the podcast by asking, uh, when did you really get into all of this in the first place? Well, I started in my very young youth. Um, I don't think I was a gifted person as such, but uh, my father used to buy, this is in England where I used to live, used to buy a magazine called The Prediction, which was a publishing then, which was basically an astrology magazine that gave you your predictions for the month, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so I, he used to bring it into the bedroom when I was back from school, because I went to boarding school. And he said, oh, you should read your horoscope and see what it's like. So I used <laughs> to do that. And then he then introduced me to Madame Astra on the pier on Shanklin on the Isle of Wight, where we used to live. So he used to go and have his consultations about his businesses and what was happening to it. He said, you should go along too. So I used to go along to that as well. So that was my first contact with a clairvoyant, which was always very interesting. And from there, I basically went up to London to work when I left school. And I found a bookshop called Foils in Tottenham Court Road. And they had an occult section. And as soon as I got in there, I was pulling books out left, right and centre. <laughs> There's no going back, right? <laughs> yeah, no going back from there. And I started, you know, with the normal things, uh, tarot card reading and palmistry. And well, I couldn't get my head around astrology there. I thought that was just a bit too much. <laughs> so that sort of that started me off on that road and then I came to Australia and um, I found the Adia bookshop which is now closed unfortunately and I used to walk in there and I used to look at the books and I just go and put my hand on one of the books and pull it out and that was the one I used to read amazing yeah. so I got gained a lot of knowledge from there and then I met a spiritual healer. I was running a business at the time and uh, my, actually my sales manager, who was a friend as well, said to me, you should really go and see Haley. She's really good. So I thought, oh, well, oh, why not? <laughs> well, off I went and she used to do sh chakra energy healing. And that was my first introduction into clearing 
stuff in your life emotionally internally through through the healing and also then i learned from her basically how to clear light uh, clear clear uh, stuff from previous incarnations which was really quite interesting yeah i'm very excited to dive into that later in this podcast <laughs> <laughs> um, and one, there was one incident that happened which was was mind-boggling i couldn't couldn't get over it basically she worked on me and the, the situation was a dead end at the time and i um and i walked into um where i was where i was had to go to go to i won't tell the story here because it take too long and <laughs> the reality was that that particular thing finished just within two hours of me seeing her wow so it broke the cycle totally so this made me realize that was something more more to the stuff than meets the eye and you know i started studying other things and i had a group of friends and we used to meet and study various books and i then we did an exercise together out of one of these books which was where you communicated with your with a partner so you picked a partner to work with and you you literally exchanged energy again in my book in my book abundance uh, with your higher self i actually talk about that and i call it mutual healing so basically you're you're actually bringing the energy in the conscious energy from your higher self and you're channeling it to the other person and you can work on them but what i found with this was that actually you picked up on previous incarnations wow and if that if the person was connected to you which most most of the time they were because you wouldn't be doing it otherwise you would actually relive those incarnations with that person. So that was fine, it was interesting. Then I met my second wife and we practiced this stuff. And we realized that basically we had connections on many, many previous incarnations. And most of it was we were actually a couple in in those incarnations amazing one of them was actually in scotland i can remember that because she used to say i used to wear a kilt <laughs> I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't imagine that so um that made me realize that there actually is no separation between people we all think there is but but there's an energetic energy that runs from all of us and it affects all of us one way or another. Yeah. So, you know, it's, um, it's, a, how can I put this? It's um, a very, we, we close ourselves off to this energy. We don't believe it exists. We believe we're individuals. We're actually conditioned by society. Mm. That we're an individual. We have to stand our own feet and whatever and all this sort of stuff. But the reality is there is a connection. And of course, this connection is a very obvious one, for, for instance, with mother and son, mother and daughter. That's not a very obvious one that one can touch on. But that goes further. It goes to all of humanity. Mm. We're all connected one way or another. And sometimes we're connected to more, more to one person than we think. And in this case, with my, with my second wife, this is what it was this connection we had was was incredible quite frankly yeah would you say that that's possibly a twin flame a soulmate or something a little more than that i think actually there's more more than one soulmate or twin flame in this uh, in this in this world for you they're hard to find uh, but one thing i can tell you which is quite interesting when i was in my teens and living in london I used to project out this energy looking for an energy that matched mine. And I do it on two traits. I, I, <laughs> and, and I, I, and I, you know, I just realized I, just recently that that's what I was doing because I was thinking about this stuff after now I was going to talk to you. And I thought this, this started a lot longer, a lot longer before I met, um, met my wife. So, um, yeah, I realized I was actually projecting out this looking for this energy to come back to me. 
So I was trying to match my energy with somebody else. I wonder if you manifested her from a young age and you had to also go through your own journey in order to get through these barriers, you know, open up before you two would have met. Well, it's interesting. We met twice before we actually met. <laughs> Amazing. I met her on Central Station in Sydney. Yeah. I was in my 20s and she was on the same platform. Wow. And, and you're not you and you're not from Australia either. No, she wasn't either. She's Greek. Oh, there She's you Greek. go. And I looked at her and I thought, oh, being you know, being at that age, you and being in that era, you realize that, you know, um it's not like dating an Australian or an English person. It's, there's, a, there's a different culture of, around it. Yeah. So I can remember looking over and I didn't have the guts to go up and up. Uh, ask her out <laughs> on a railway station but it's interesting she actually remembered it yeah in discussion we, she remembered that and I would describe the dress she was wearing and you know, all that stuff to her and she said wow <laughs> so, and she remembered me looking at her so there you go so that one but again it happens a second time with a set of traffic lights in a car and I looked across the set of traffic lights and she was opposite me and she was in the outside lane, I was the inside lane. Yeah. And do you remember that as well? Amazing. You guys were destined to be together. There was yeah. definitely uh, universal energies bringing you together to do amazing <laughs> things, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah, so finally we did get together. Um, and I met her through business, which is funny. And I didn't, <laughs> and I didn't like her when I first met her. <laughs> as you do <laughs> no it's quite interesting because um she was a customer of my, a customer of my business and I wasn't looking after that particular account I had another guy doing it for me and then he left so I had to go and go and visit this particular business and she was the one that ran it and anyway long story short we got talking about stuff and in the end we ended up having lunch together and at the, uh, we're sitting over the table having lunch, and that's when it really started to happen. Suddenly, you realise there's some, there's this huge connection you can't work quite work out. Yeah, mm. yeah. And the reason I say this, there's more than one uh, person that you could have this with is because once she passed away, of course, I went into the dating sites and met a lot of women and, and looked around, and I actually came across this energy several times but most people are frightened to death of it they run away from it because yeah. they don't understand what's going on mm. which is fine anyway so uh, from there um we had a life together and it was interesting interesting the 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 spiritual side of life lasted about two years i know that's doesn't sound and then things started to happen with families etc so life for want of a better word took over Mm. and she actually got cancer and passed away um do you want to hear the story of what i mentioned to you on on the net now yeah about... i think the viewers would love to get some insight because this is quite interesting yeah anyway when we were doing the spiritual connection we actually made it and i tell you when we made the spiritual connection not when we were we went into in into the into the into business together because that's what we did and that's what basically shifted the energy because we we're going to very back into a very material world if you get my drift yeah and also on that there were pressures from outside from family and that altered the whole energy con construct but when we were doing the for what do I call it a challenge together telling our energy together we sort of made the pact that we never leave each other even when one person died and when she did pass away and as i as i mentioned to you uh, on the uh, on the um on the mail um i was in the room when she was very sick and was um was dying was she dying she was on morphine or whatever and i saw her energy leave her body and stand in 
the left hand corner of the room and look look back at herself yeah so you saw that saw that energy leave um and in um so I, I, to go back to the book in the metaphysical mysteries there's actually a section that's channeled that explains what happens when one passes away and how the energy leaves the body etc so that's you know so i in a sense i experienced seeing it happen but at the time didn't really know what was going on and we are what happened was um basically she passed away within 10 minutes of that happening yeah i'm sorry to hear that that's that's a long time ago now anyway um that was fine and then i started to hear a voice in my head all the time and i thought i'm going nuts right 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 it was like she'd never left and um i put up that for about four months uh, but a lot of things happened which I'll, i'll just mention to you one thing was i don't know if you understand but in, in greek orthodox uh religion they actually go and uh, go back to the grave after i think 40 days i think it is so the person can actually leave their leave the earthly plane and go to go to heaven basically oh. and i i'm not psychic as in the visual sense but i can i sense energy and movement and at the at the time that time the priest was waving his his um, incensing and doing his greek prayer mm. and, and i looked over at the grave and there was her dancing on her grave laughing her head off <laughs> you may think that's really strange maybe the the viewers may think that's really weird and maybe think i'm nuts but i could feel it and whatever i actually mentioned it to her her son and her daughter who are my steps children and and my son who's a um my son actually said I, oh, i felt something too so that was interesting but i got to a point i couldn't stand it anymore and i actually had to ask her to leave mm. and all i did was say i said you know we both need to get on with our lives wherever we are mm. so now i think it's time that you left and she left literally wow. just like that God. What an incredible journey. I yeah. mean, that must have also been a little bit difficult for you at the time, having to still have her in your presence and still talking to you, you know, above the grave. And, you know, I, I can't imagine what that would have been like for you to even get through. Well, in the end, it was actually too much. You just had to, you just, I just had to leave, let her leave and, and start to grieve. Yeah. And can I ask the part where she was dancing on her grave? Do you think that, that was because she was just trying to send you a message that death is not what we think, she's quite happy, you know, she's she's in her element. What, what do you think that meant to you? Oh, that was the case. What she what she was saying to us that the stuff that we had done together was very real. Yeah. And, and basically there there is an afterlife and what is, you know, but what is that afterlife? And that was the beginning of her afterlife for want of a better word. But again in the metaphysical mysteries the channel also explains about that and what happens to the consciousness and where it goes and what happens to it and so yeah definitely what part of it stays that mediums teach to talk to so people have talked to talk to people that passed away what part of their consciousness is it and all the rest of it it's really quite interesting because there's a lot more to us than, than meets the eye and this is why i think your book is absolutely fantastic and before we dive into some of the chapters in your book uh i just wanted to ask you how you channeled it what what was the mechanisms going through um your life at the time to be able to channel this information because it's quite remarkable um it happened over a number of years and i've had to, i've had actually had to revamp it in the sense that i had to put it into some order so it made some sense so it flowed a little bit yeah all the different stuff came through at different times and it actually started before before i met uh, my second wife um and i just made made the notes but basically what happened happens was happening was 
I would be starting to meditate in the morning and because that's my time I meditate and suddenly I'd get told oh you need to get a pen and paper right and was that an audible voice that told you or was that a knowing a thought well the, everything came through in into my mind it's not so you know this is this is this is it wasn't you know hello I want you to go and get <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was in my mind you need to go and get paper and a pen right 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 and I used to meditate and then I come out of the meditation and then we're going to talk about and then the message would come we're going to talk about this now so I just had the pen and the paper and it would just stream into my head and I had to write so fast really oh. fast, as it came in and whatever and that's what they call automatic writing. Is that right? No, this wasn't automatic writing because it was in my head. But automatic writing, you put on your hand on the, and it does it automatic, does it on your, on, on its own. This right. was you know, the, the dictation. It's like a dictation was coming through my head. And I was writing it. It was stuff I didn't. There's no way I would know this. Is <laughs> it's quite amazing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, so that's the way it used to happen. And then as time moved on, I would be meditating maybe and I'll get a message come in my head. Oh, we're going to start giving you some new information in the next couple of days. So make sure you've got paper and pen near you. Hi, guys. If you're enjoying this video, please don't forget to give it a like, share and subscribe. And also it would be great if you could tag three of your closest friends who would find value out of this content. And more importantly, please comment below your thoughts and how you've gone along your journey, as I'd love to hear from you all. But guys, I won't interrupt any further. Let's jump back into the video. Okay, Graham, let's dive into the first chapter of your book in Metaphysical Mysteries Revealed. Uh, I want to go through some of the things that you mentioned and can you share some insights on what you understand about the collective consciousness uh, and unconditional love? That's a great place to start in your book. <laughs> well, we actually... How am I going to put this? I'm, I'm going to have to um, perhaps start, start start with we have a higher consciousness, uh, a spiritual higher consciousness, which is broken into three parts. is the emotional higher self, the mental higher self, and the spiritual higher self. That is intact with our physical bodies. That's just through the, the aura of the, of the etheric body. Beyond that, we have a multidimensional higher self, which is actually a form of collective consciousness. That is actually mm. part of us that we don't, don't actually tap into, hardly anybody taps into in this, on this planet. The higher self is the key to that place, but you have to know, know, know exists. Now, I've, from, from my perspective, I believe that the channeling now, and I'm, this is after I wrote the book, my my ad, actually comes from my multidimensional higher self. It doesn't come from anywhere else because it has a lot of knowledge. And if you, when you read the book, you'll realize it talks about that we actually lead more than one version of ourselves mm. on different dimensions. So this consciousness that we have is a collective consciousness which creates a multitude of lives, circumstances, et cetera, et cetera. And this also includes the, the previous incarnations, like some people like to call it. But there is no time on that side, so it could be previous or future. It wouldn't make any difference to, it, to, your, to your beingness on that side of that, of that energy. I use the side, it's trying to express something in the linear values, and that is really hard in spirituality to, to do that. Mm. To do it because it isn't linear, it is actually around you, it's actually in you, it's not a, it's part of you. And this is the big thing, it is part of you. So this collective consciousness um, has enormous energy, enormous knowledge, enormous power, for want of a better word but is part of the all 
and there are a lot of these connective um, um, multi multi-dimensional consciousness I get right of there. <laughs> very well said <laughs> there are lots of them there's just not one of them so our multi-dimensional consciousness is one of many I don't know answer your question I think I've gone right away from it really but anyway. no no we're, we're heading on the right path so our multi-dimensional consciousness is one of many could you just explain that in a little in a little better way for me to sort of understand where you're at there well in the in the, again in the book of actually what happened was they channeled a infograph for me to write and show it which shows the, the out the out how it works and awesome it down. so because they said they said you need a visual because if somebody's reading this they need the visuals uh, words are not enough they need a visual <laughs> uh, that mul those multi-dimensional consciousnesses is is, uh, is part of the all and i use the word all that there is i changed that in the book I'm, I, i've said i don't use the word god because god is used by organized religion mm. and i feel that takes away from what this is it's about the th for what a better word the thing that is all that there is <clears throat> excuse me and that is what connects us all. That is the collective consciousness, that the everything, that's everything that we are is all connected. Yeah, look, absolutely. But so every, there's no, as as above, as below, as they say, as, as it says, but everything is connected is above and it is connected to below. But it's also, uh, there is also separate, separateness, I'll get the word right. People are, beings are separate because it's a, a, also a choice. Mm. So on this planet, we have choice. We have freedom of choice. Uh, yeah. our, our freedom of choice is manipulated, whether one likes or not, because we're all pre-programmed, whether we like it or not. <laughs> and the big programming at the moment is consumerism. Yes, I no. heavily agree with that. Um, and then you've got people who live totally out of their ego, which are people like dictators, mm. wars, because it's all about them. It's not about anybody else. They don't That's care right. about anybody else. But the, everything is connected, interconnected. So all of, it, everything affects everything in one way, form or another. But you can see there's always repercussions in, in the world from what happens somewhere else in the world. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'd like to take you to yeah. chapter two, uh, enlightenment. You know, there's a lot of conversation about this topic, enlightenment. What is it and why must we have it? Well, enlightenment is really living your life through your higher consciousness, your spiritual higher consciousness, which is is connected to you in the physical now which but again is mainly blocked people just don't mm. go there and then moving from there to your multi-dimensional consciousness that's 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 real enlightenment because if you're living from your higher self you're living a life that's from want of a better word is perfect or perfect for you spiritually mm. That's the key word. Now, my, the book, Creating Abundance with Your Higher Self, is okay. Um, abundance is a lot a lot of things. Most people with abundance have is having a new Ferrari in the gap, <laughs> having tons of money in the bank. But really, abundance is about is about a total a total of your life, not just part of your life. Mm. Uh, your emotional life, your mental life, your spiritual life, and your physical life. And in the book, I've tried to, in there, I've tried to, I've tried to tackle that abundance in a, in a Western society and then translate it into a spiritual program which takes you back to your, takes you to your higher consciousness. Yeah, very fantastic. And I like to liken abundance to balance, really, what you've just explained. You know, everything and all things in every area of your life. It's not about that Ferrari or that, the, you know, the money in the bank or that fancy house. It's about walking down the street and knowing that you have everything 
in balance and in motion and everything is peaceful. Is that correct? It's, well, it's what you need to, to, to live and to, and to be able to then um, move your consciousness to another, to a, another level. Because if you're mm. living, living at a, from another level, you're living only what is right for you. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, I love the subject on spiritual development. So a chapter in your book covers that and why challenges are important in spiritual development. Uh, I'd love to know more about this. Can we have a conversation about spiritual development? Well, let's, let's talk about, maybe just talk about challenges because challenges are, are challenges and, and failure are actually the best things in life because they actually mm. teach you so much. The secret with challenges is, is, is if you're given a problem, is to face it and know what to do with it. That's right. And instead of saying, oh, shit, excuse the question. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I, I've got this huge problem. Uh, I can't face it. If you sit down and then try and find a way around it, that's when a challenge is worth doing because that will educate you and take you somewhere else. And it's the same with spirituality. Spirituality is about challenges. So you, first of all, you need to get, you need to have the intent to do something. So you need to want to be spiritual. Then you, then you need to take action to do it. Um, and, oh, sorry, you need to get knowledge next, and then you need to take action. So you basically have to gain some knowledge. And, there are ways into that spirituality. And for me, it's been meditation and chakras basically have been my way in. I'm actually sure there are other ways, but this is the way I what I've used because it gives you a visual and a progression progression system. Mm. Because like anything else, you can't nothing happens immediately. We're in a physical world and therefore we're limited. If you're living, uh, if your consciousness, part of your consciousness lives on the astral plane, then things may happen much faster. A thought becomes reality very quickly, where here a thought takes time to develop and then you have to put it into action, etc. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Does that answer your question? I don't think it does. It definitely does. But you've made me want to dive into law of attraction because I do talk a lot about this. And I often like to get insights from different channelers, different um, people into spirituality. A lot of my guests, we do discuss this. So what is your take on law of attraction and how can we um, best understand it? Easy. It misses the main ingredient. Spirituality. Yeah, yeah, understanding all parts of spirituality. It, 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 it doesn't take into account, it takes in the mental, doesn't, mm. and it doesn't really take, it takes part of the emotion in, I guess, and it takes it in the physical, that's for sure, but it doesn't take in the spirituality of a human being mm. because without that spirituality, what are we? Yeah. I mean, the art, the phrase... We are spiritual beings living in a physical body, I think is incredibly true. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. You know, I've had a lot of people on my channel who have had near death experiences and they all say the same thing. You know, this is a school, we come here to learn. We're not really this body, this meat flesh. This is not who we are. We need to tap into our spiritual self, the all that we are. Um, so I definitely agree with you, you know, diving into spirituality to make law of attraction even work in the first place. Well, the point is you can, it will work to a point. Mm. And then life take, well, not life takeover, circumstances. And I've used some exa and examples in, in creating the abundance, actually, of what I, I did once using that, that, those techniques without adding spirituality. Mm. I got what I wanted. Right. I paid a price. Oh, okay. And how do you mean you paid the price for that? Because I didn't dot the T's and got, dot the adopted eyes and I was coming from a selfish personal point of view right 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 so if you want to manifest that which you yes. want you do have to cross the t's and dot the i's you have to be really specific on what you want you have to be in the right mind frame of that which you want because you and gotta it be, and it has to be for the good of all involved yes otherwise that's where karma comes in yeah so I always, um, again, I've always, uh, it's always should be for your highest good. 
Fantastic. Thank you so much. And you definitely answered my question there. Uh, so moving on to chapter 22, um, I believe it's really important that we should really take this topic more seriously. And I've spoken about this before. Uh, you wrote about the dangers of manipulation of the subconscious by media and multimedia systems. Why is this important to understand? Because we're being controlled. Exactly. <laughs> if we if we live through if we work through our again I have to keep on going back to this point if we if we can move our mind and our beingness to our higher spiritual self when we view the world totally differently because mm -hmm. we're we're coming from a different space so that multimedia well it will affect you unless you don't listen to it at all so as you turn off the radio don't go on Facebook, don't go on Twitter or whatever it is your, mm. your favorite media is, you're being manipulated and you and you see a, you can actually see it. So it's so obvious when you look at say USA where how how basic their politics is so you know broken. Yeah. And how and how people are thinking. It's it's it becomes so obvious. So it's all done. It's it's you're you're programmed and you've been programmed since you've been a kid. You program mm. your parents, by your teachers, by your friends, uh, whatever whatever happens. Um, so all that stuff has affected you to the way you think. So if you can move your mind and your consciousness to another space, then you can change that. Yeah, and, and something that I want to point out, I did have a conversation with Christian Sonberg and he mentioned that, you know, we do have a level of responsibility to where we guide our and direct our attention. You know, we're talking about 2 million people dying on the news and and, and we're focusing on that and that's damaging to your psyche and, and, and your life as it is. You know, we should be focusing more on the positives in life because that's going to create our reality. So, whatever it is we're watching, whatever we're listening to, whatever we're perceiving in our reality is going to become our reality. So with all of this programming and conditioning going on, is there a way that we can break free of that programming and break free of that conditioning and create a better life for ourselves? And also, is this going to help the collective consciousness moving forward? That's a very complicated question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, I keep on going back to the same thing. Yeah. Uh, the the basic the basic things is what 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 the first book says, metaphysical physical mysteries says. Basically, we are much more than we think we are. Um, we are much more powerful than any AI will ever be. But we have to move our consciousness to another level. Once we move our consciousness to another level, e.g., your one's higher self, one's multi-dimensional self, everything changes mm. because our whole focus of our minds, our subconscious and our conscious minds, change. Now, one of the things I've started to do in my meditation is I now state that my and i've been doing this for a while my subconscious and my conscious mind is linked to my spiritual higher self and the various levels and then i actually then say my 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 spiritual higher self is linked to my multi-dimensional self and i although this is not you know this is not a magic thing where suddenly you become super spiritual <laughs> It's, it's something that happens over a period of time because your multidimensional self and your higher self will only give you what you can handle. Yeah, because so I do it, understand it can get quite quite interesting. It could be overwhelming mm. until, you, until, you, until you can accept it. So I keep on going back to the same thing. I'm, I'm, I'm saying basically if you can start to get your consciousness to be in those higher spiritual realms that will circumvent for want of a better word that programming well i but guess i'm going to and then, i think i'll just ditch the notes for a second and ask the right question because <laughs> you did mention it's 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 very rare to be able to tap into that part of us yeah how 
can we do this? I mean, well, again, that's that, again, book two, create abundance with your higher self. I give you a lot of tools. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. Tool, I give you tools to to get there. It's not the whole answer because I actually stopped it at one place. Uh, I decided that I had to, I, I stopped. I thought I can't give too much. I think it's too much. And I was, uh, I got a, a message the other day that some more stuff is about to be being given to me about the multidimensional higher self and what it's all about. I don't know what yet because I haven't got it, but uh, that, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm so, definitely interested to find out. <laughs> well, let's leave that question for our next session because uh, the viewers here watching, we will be covering another book in another episode. Uh, so we will get back to the notes here. Um, moving on to a different chapter, and this is one that I'm very interested in, and that's chapter 24, Spirit Guides. Who and what are they? Spirit Guides can be various in various forms. Some can be uh, benevolent and some can be unbenevolent <laughs> as above so below um and in that book it gives you a chart of the different levels of creation on this planet and i'm talking now um in a esoteric point of view of above and below and the, the middle is the physical mm. so you can channel a guide that is above or below. And if it's below, it's all about control. Yeah, that's right. That's why. So it's like the vibrational yeah. sequences, right? Yeah. 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 If it's, if it's um, above, it normally, it normally is, um, a positive thing but you have to remember again it's probably done because they are getting something out of this as well as you yeah i have heard that um you know whatever happens on earth here is also happening in the universe so on and so forth so you know they're helping us but it's also helping them and yeah. um and yeah i mean you can probably have um you know uh, I mean, there are people, talk, uh, for example, to the Palladians or whatever, the, of, they are star galactic people or whatever. And that, that, uh, that's fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that or whatever. But there's another side of the whole thing uh, as well. It's uh, very, um, it's not one-sided. <laughs> yeah, but definitely. <laughs> that's the right, the right word um so yeah they can they can be positive on or, or they can be positive or negative but when it's um when it's negative you get things to what like like things like called walk-ins have you heard what a walk-in is right so i didn't know that that was negative because i have spoken to a walk-in i think two of them uh, yeah. and a friend of mine who's a psychic medium she became a walk-in for about four months um and then she's no longer a walk-in but yeah let, let's dive into that well, it's basically a consciousness that walks in and control and takes over your your mind. Yeah, yeah. Because it, from what I've learned about a walk in is that when you do have a, a soul walk in, you're no longer the person you were before. And family members, friends, they'll start to notice this isn't the same yeah. person. Their life will change. They have different partners. Like everything about this person is completely different. Yeah. Um, but from my belief and my understanding on what I thought a walk-in was, was it was just your higher self, another aspect of yourself that was guiding you on a different path. Am not I wrong? Necessarily because basically you got to remember that you, if you're not living your life or coming from your, from that, that place in your life, then you're, you're open to other things. Right. Right. I'll, I'll tell you a story about, uh, um, I did a did a class with my healing lady friend back in the day, where we did past past life therapy. So awesome! <laughs> and it's it's a little bit away from what we're talking about, but it gives you an idea. Um, and in this, I went back and I saw myself standing on a rock. I was wearing leather sandals, and I looked down, and I was in basically a Roman tunic. And I was standing on this rock with a sword and I was literally slaughtering people. 
Oh. And anyway, what happened was we finished the session, but I didn't release that particular energy. Right. I walked around for a week feeling aggressive, angry, and I could have killed somebody. Wow, that's very interesting. And well, how, how did you clear that? I went back to see my healing friend. <laughs> I, I wasn't at so that time. So I went back. I actually rang her and I said, well, this is what's happened. She's better come in quick. So right. uh, she made an appointment. I came in. We we got rid of that basic energy, which was which was sitting which was sitting in my consciousness. It hadn't left. Right. And another question I would like to add to that is, would protection be something that we would need to start to look into when we dive into past life regressions um, or energy clearings? Is that something that we should do if we do dive into these? Um, the past life regressions, you need to be able to close off and clear clear it before when you finish. Yeah. It's really, real, real, real. It's not my area of expertise, by the way. Yeah. But you would you you need to be able to close yourself off in the right right way, or the person doing it for you or helping you needs to be able to close you off mm. and seal your aura. Move it out of it and see your oil. You've had the experience. You kept you kept the knowledge. That's fine, but you need to move that energy out of you again because that energy hasn't gone away. It still exists. Yeah, that's right. So when you pass over, a part of you still exists on the astral for a very long time. Not all of you. This is what it's the part of the personality lives there, mm. and that is what you bring in so so with that with that past lives is there any way that we can work on clearing that is it lessons that we may not have learned that is stuck in our consciousness um well know, your, basically your multi-dimensional heart self does all that for you it works out exactly what you need and what you don't mm. and um I used, to, I used to call it the super consciousness, but it's like a, for another word, it's like a super computer in a sense. It basically has all this knowledge and wisdom that it has brought in from all the incarnations, including the one you are now. And this is, and this is the problem what people can't handle. There is more than one of you. Yeah. Multitudes of, a multitude of, of previous incarnations. So it's, you really actually part of a very complex being, for want of a better word. Right, right. Um, although you feel singular here in this physical world, you're actually not. You're part of something much bigger. Do you and think that, that... that... A lot of people don't like that because it's it, it basically takes you away from your ego. Yeah, and you said everything... Well, I don't think you mentioned this, but everything that I've learned is that we there is no time. Everything is happening simultaneously. There are... Uh, multiple infinite versions of our reality, uh, which is what we were kind of just speaking about. Um, one of the questions that I love bringing up with my friends is, is it possible to quantum jump into a better reality? Like, is this a possibility? Does this ever happen? Um, well, in the, in, in, the, um, in, there's in one of the chapters in metaphysical mysteries, there's a bit about double gangers. Right. Where some, you were, another version of you appears somewhere else and you're not there. Wow. Uh, my grandmother, for example, when I was a boy, said, you know, and I, she said, and I, and I wasn't at home, I was somewhere else. And then she said to me, oh, but you were down the street. 